I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord because God has been good to me on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday. I had a little bit of struggle on Thursday, on Friday, on Saturday, and now I have the opportunity to collectively to come together to bless the Lord. So I'm going to give you one more chance to put your hands together. Bethel, you might be at home in your bed, wherever you might be, come on and bless the Lord as we go to God in prayer this morning in your own way. Please assume your own posture of prayer. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord God, to bless your name, Lord God, because you are a great God. You are a magnificent God. You are a holy God. God, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves, Lord God. So we say thank you, Lord God, for every relationship that's been sustained. Lord God, thank you for every financial breakthrough that has been given to us already in 2023. God, thank you, Lord God, for the ways that you've helped us to discern, Lord God, our own vocational pursuits, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for all the ways that you've blessed and healed our family members, Lord God. And God, in this moment, Lord God, we know that you are a great God. You are a God that can do the impossible. So God, we brought some things that we've already declared impossible in our minds. But Lord God, we serve a God, Lord God, who makes impossible possible. So Lord God, we lay those burdens, Lord God, at your feet. We lay those trials and tribulations at your feet. And God, we give them to you, knowing you are the author and the finisher of all of our faith, God. That you will have the final word, God. So in this worship service, Lord God, we are believing and expecting you, God, to work in a miraculous way. We are expecting you, God, to do the impossible. And God, we acknowledge we might have everything together. We might have came here with no burdens or no problems. So God, we are willing to even to intercede for our neighbor, God, because they might have something, Lord God, that they need you to fix this morning. And God, this is not just a selfish prayer, but this is, this is a collective prayer to acknowledge your presence in this space because you are omnipresent. You are everywhere all the time. So God, we humbly invite you into our heart this morning to move in us, to transform us. Holy God, receive our humble worship this morning. We believe it, we receive it, we decree it and declare it in Jesus' name. Everyone say, Amen. Good morning, everybody. Come on, let's give our God a hand clap. Let's just worship him. Let's thank him that we're here. He's awesome, God. He's awesome, God.
Hallelujah. Psalms 95. It says, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with songs. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea of his for he made and his hands formed the dry land. And so the scripture, let's go back to the scripture it says. Let us shout joyfully to him with songs. It says, let us shout joyfully to him with songs. And so as we give God thanks this morning, as we give God praise, and as we lift our voices together, I know in my word it says Jericho came tumbling down, right? And so we're believing in God this morning that whatever our Jerichos are this morning, as we lift our hands together, as we lift our worship together, that those things are going to come tumbling down. Oh, 
Lord of Lord, you deserve all our worship. You deserve it all, Lord. Yeah. Yeah.
deserve our praise, God. You deserve our time, Lord. You deserve our hearts, Lord. You deserve our minds. You deserve our everything, everything. We thank you for your unchanging, your unfailing love for us. Yeah, you deserve it. Come on, sustain your praise real quick. I know the praise and worship team is walking off the stage. That's all right, because God is still in the place. I don't know about you this morning, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, because I know God saved me. And so when I think about the difficulties of my life, I realized I tried to put my life back together. I felt like Humpty Dumpty. I was trying to put my life back together. My family tried to do it. They couldn't do it. My friends tried to do it and they couldn't do it. But there was a man named Jesus who came in one by one, block by block, put my life back together again. And so when we sing the song, you deserve it. I sing it with all that's in me. I'm going to ask the praise worship team to grab their mics right now. Because there's a worship in this place. We're not just going to move on to the next part. We're going to sing this song. So put that thing that's on your mind. As Talib begins to lead us. Come on, sing the song together one more time. Oh, you deserve it. You deserve it. Moment. Hallelujah. This is your time. worship said God we know that you deserve it all of the glory belongs to you all of the honor belongs to you all of the praise belongs to you because God it was you who put us back together again and God we know it will be you who will put our marriages back together again God it will be you who will put our children back together again. God, it will be you who will put our crazy co-workers back together again. God, it will be you who will put our finances back together again. God, it will be you, even in the midst of our mistakes, that will put our futures back together again. God, it is you that will put our neighborhoods and communities back together again. So, Lord God, in advance, we give you the praise the glory and honor because God you deserve it God we thank you for this moment of worship this moment to honor you in community so this God we say 
Amen. Bless the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Family, do me a favor. Look at your neighbor and say, Happy New Year. You can still say it. You can say it to the end of January. Happy New Year. Amen. It's good to see you all this morning. I know that some of you all had some New Year's resolutions that I know you are still going strong in. So, Happy New Year to you. We want to welcome you to Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church. At this time, you might be new to Bethel. You might not have been here for a while. You haven't been to Bethel maybe all year. You see what I did there? Yeah. You might not have been to Bethel all year, but you are here today. If you haven't been to Bethel for a while, this is your first time visiting Bethel. Won't you stand real quick? Won't you stand real quick? I want to see you. You might be online, wherever you might be tuning in from. You might not have tuned in for a while. Amen. You go ahead and put where you're from in the chat. Amen. We thank you for our visitors this morning. Please remain standing this morning. It's good to see you. On behalf of our pastors, Pastor Ray and Pastor Gloria White Hammond, we welcome you to Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church. Here at Bethel, we do love Jesus. We do love our community, but most importantly, we do love you. And so because we love you, we want to give you the greatest gift we can give you at this moment, which is the gift of prayer. Family, let us extend our hands to our members and to our uh, guests this morning. Let us pray. Precious and holy God, we thank you, Lord God, for our beloved visitors who have come to worship with us this morning, Lord God. They're not here by happenstance, but God, they are here by divine appointment. And so, God, we thank you for all the ways that you are moving in their life, even right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We declare and prophesy a special blessing of love and power and liberation over their life in every way, Lord God. Bless them in Jesus' name. Help them to leave here better than they came. We believe it, we receive it, we decree it and declare it over their life in Jesus' name. Let everyone say amen. Amen. Clap it up for our visitors real quick. Amen. Amen. Family. Family, show them some love the best way you can after service. We want to make sure that we love on them this morning. You might be tuning in on Facebook, on YouTube for the first time. We welcome you to Bethel. We love you in Jesus' name. Go ahead and put where you're from. We want to make sure that we follow up with you. Bethel, at this time, this is a time that we can all participate in this morning. It is time to give. Clap your hands this morning. Amen. It's good to see you all. It's time to give. Amen. Amen. Family, do me a favor. We often give electronically, so put your phones up this morning. Put your phone up. You can look at the screen. These are all the ways that you can give to Bethel. We're going to pray together real quick. What you're giving to, over 35 years, you've helped to sustain this beautiful institution. But this is your institution. This is your church. Because of that, you're not just sowing a seed into the ministry, but you are sowing a seed into you and to your family. All the ways that you give allow us to do the amazing programming that we do week by week with our young people through the Bethel uh, Social Justice Institute. All the ways that we're impacting our community in beautiful and sustaining ways is because of you. And so we thank you this morning. Let us pray, God, we give our first fruits to you this morning. God, we thank you, Lord God, that we have something to give, Lord God. We give with, Lord God, with clarity. We give with conviction, God. We give with the generous heart that you have given to us, knowing, Lord God, that it will come back to us, Lord God, some tenfold in Jesus' name. We sow a seed of love. We sow a seed of liberation. We sow a seed of righteousness, Lord God, through our first fruits. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Let's pay attention to our giving video at the moment. And after that, you're going to receive our praise and worship team.
not the law. Tithe, or 10%, is the biblical starting point for giving. Jesus validated this in Matthew 23, but as the Macedonians showed us, their giving was a direct result of the joy they found in God's grace, not from an obligation to give. These verses model for us the response God is looking for when we look at our financial situation. Paul tells us that the Macedonians gave themselves first to the Lord, and in the same way we should approach our finances by first affirming or reaffirming our commitment to trust God's promises. And secondly, we are told the Macedonians gave. Their generosity was the proof of where their joy really came from. And in the same way, our giving echoes what our hearts are trusting in. Let's just stay in the attitude of worship. This song says, Lord, I'm available to you. And so as we're preparing for the word, my prayer is that our hearts are open to receive what God has to give this morning. <clears throat> so if you know it, if you know it, come on and sing with me. If you want to stand and worship, please do that.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Glad to be in the land of the living today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Being available to God. It's really all God asks. All God, with all our skills and all our talent and all our intelligence, all God asks is that you be available to him. Praise God. Praise God. I'd like you to give a give an applause for our praise and worship team. They bless us every week. Every week. We thank you. We thank you. We take this time to thank you. To thank you. Sometimes we don't say thanks enough. Amen. We'll let people know when they messed up, but we don't let them know when they do good. <laughs> so we just want to thank you. God is good. God is good. We just, we're going to see what God has to say this morning. God always has something new to say. And, and uh, We ask you to listen for the word when it comes your way. God has a word for each one of us in here. It's a different word. What he has for me, he doesn't have for you. What I need, you don't need. But what you need, somebody else doesn't need. So just listen and see what is it that God would say? What is it that God would deposit in our spirit today? today. This isn't an exercise that we do. We just come out just to be coming because we're used to it. We want to hear a word from God. We welcome you to listen to all those that are online. Listen to see what God has to say to you right where you are. We thank you for being here. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Lord, Lord touch our hearts, Father God. Lord, touch our ears, Lord God. But most importantly, touch our spirits, Father, that we would begin to think and look exactly like you because of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Amen, amen. Praise God. Greetings this morning. I, you know Pastor Ray and Pastor Gloria are away today than hopefully getting some R&R &R because they work hard to bless the people. They work hard. They work hard. They're good, they're good shepherds. Amen? They're good shepherds. Yes, yes, yes. But we just want to take a few minutes to just to, just to, just to look at a couple of things, what thus saith the Lord. You know, let's take a quick year in review 2022 was in the books. It's gone. Amen. Now, it went by fast. It went by really fast. I don't know where it went. It's like a couple of blinks and it was behind us. <laughs> now, if you're young, if, if, you're, if, if, if you're one of the young people, then you'll say it went by too slowly. But if you got a few years on you, you say, where did it go? <laughs> two different ways of looking at the same thing. Last year, quite a few people faced things that they didn't really think that they would make it through. They faced things that, 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 that came up that, that, that were tough. That were tough. Their giants seemed so big. Their challenges were intimidating. They prayed for help. Because that's what you end up doing. If you don't do it in the beginning, you end up praying for help. But before their prayer was done, the, the enemy was whispering in their ears, that's impossible. <laughs> it's never going to turn around. Mm. That situation is too bad. It's been going on too long. This is of your own making, so don't expect God to get you out of it. There's no way out. And the whisperings continued 
It's impossible. It's impossible. You know, it's amazing to think that God's people listen to the negative whisperings in our ears by the enemy more than we listen to the loud and intentional declarations of the scriptures in the Holy Spirit. We choose to listen to the, to the whisperings more so than we do the word. But it's 2023 now. Despite all the roadblocks and all the uncertainties and all the rough times, here we are. We made it through. Although God had to remind us over and over that he specializes in the impossible. That's his specialty. In unemployment situations, in no money for the rent situations, in getting out of a bad relationship situation. God specializes in our not knowing which way to turn situations. And I don't know about you, but there's plenty of time. I don't know what to do. But God specializes in all of those things. And God performed some mighty miracles in the life of people in 2022. There are some miracle people here today. Things that God got you out of that you never figured you'd come out of. And, you, and, and, the, and the reason why we don't know it is because we don't share those things. When God brings us through, we say, Phew, and then we go on about our business. We don't share our testimonies. We don't share our witnesses. So when someone else is going through something similar, they don't know what God can do because you didn't tell them. Now, 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 there are many things, there are many times that we worried, that we were stressed, that we lost sleep, that we, we found ourselves stuck in the mud in trials and tribulations in 2022. That's where we were. We found ourselves. But God brought us through all of those things. Now, coming through some of that stuff was scary. And, and I, I don't want to make it sound like we came through singing la, 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 and just enjoying life. No, it was scary. There were some things that we went through that, that turned some of our hair white. And, 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 and we talked to God and we confessed because that's what we know to do. We always wait till the situation gets, get, gets rough, but, but, but we talk and we confess. And then we made those promises to God. Promise God with, with our back up against the wall, if you'll just get me out of this... <laughs> I will do and fill in the blank. <laughs> I'll do it, Lord. I'll do it. I'll be that person. And, 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 and at the time, we really meant it. <laughs> we meant it. We were grasping at straws, reaching for anything we could grab hold on. But after the crisis was over, <laughs> somehow we found ourselves back in the same place that we were weeks before the crisis. So, same place. Matter of fact, sometimes even a little deeper because we were feeling a little cocky. <laughs> but, 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 but we meant it at the time, but we, we, we found ourselves right back there after the crisis disappeared. Funny thing about commitment. We want people to commit to us in relationships, to the church that we say that we love, to the work that needs to be done here. We want to commit to God who sits high and looks low. But the truth is, there can never be any commitment to God for any of those things until we surrender first. We have to surrender. We have to throw, throw up the white flag. We have to give it up. We try to commit before we surrender. And what happens is we end up failing. There can never be commitment to God about anything until we surrender our life first, until we surrender our will. 
We tried to do so many things in 2022 in our own strength. But, but, but we have to understand that it's God's strength that will get us through the crisis. It's God's strength that, that, that brings us through. It's really God's strength that does everything that we need to be done for us. Not our own. Many of the things we tried to do in 2022 were based on our commitment and not our surrender. But 2022 is in the past. It's in the books. It's behind us. We look at it in our rear view mirror. So I encourage you to do something different in 2023, right from the very beginning. Let it go. <laughs> Let 2022 go. Let it pass on. I mean completely. All of the failures of the past, let them go. All of the old habits and the attitudes that didn't serve us well at all, but we still clung on to, let them go. All the negative things that people said to you and said about you, let them go. <laughs> let them go. Now, we think we let them go sometimes because we think about other things, but sometimes that becomes our default, and we go right back there. <laughs> we remember what such and such did, what they said. You know, some of us are still being controlled by things people said and did. Years ago, decades ago, some of them people are dead and gone. <laughs> But, 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 but we still remember, we still hold on to those things. And they hurt us. They pierce us. And it keeps us stuck in one place. Anybody here ever been stuck on something? <laughs> in a place stuck and, 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 and you know that you probably should move on, but somehow you just keep going back there. Some things we just have to learn to let go. Let them go. We're never going to change them because you can't change history. You can make new history, but you can't change history. Let it go. What we didn't have when we were young and how rough it was growing up, let it go. Stop telling them stories. Move on from that place. Some of us are comfortable in the midst of our woe is me. <laughs> Comfortable in the midst of our pity parties. We're comfortable. It's what we're used to. It's how we get people's attention. You know folks that, that always tell that same story over and over again about how rough it was and how they wouldn't treat right. And, but those attitudes are keeping us fixed in a place that we don't want to be. And that's what God was trying to tell the children of Israel, when they were in captivity to the Babylonians, he, he wanted to let them know, look, I got something, I got something for you. I got something for you, but, but, but you have to hear what I say. Not only that, you have to do what I say, and you have to incorporate that word in your life because the word that God gives us is a life-giving word. It's something that will move us along where we're supposed to be. So when Isaiah 43 Verses 18 and 19, it says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God says, forget the former things. Don't dwell on them. We, we spend too much time thinking about the negative things that did not serve us well. Forget those things. God wants us to practice letting go. Forget the little hurts. Forget the comments. Forget the fact that you never could be good enough. Forget the fact that you were dumped back in high school by him or her, and, and, and somehow you just can't let it go. It bruises your ego, but you can't let it go. God said, I want you to learn to let some things go. Now, now, you can hold on to them if you want to, 
like you've been doing, but if you do that, you'll just continue to get what you've gotten all along. Forget the fact that you never seem to get the breaks. And you know, the thing is, we all nod and say, yeah, yeah, but you know what? Some of these very things are crippling us right now. <laughs> They're like a weight around our neck. Forget all the complaining. Forget all the whining about life. God says, I want you to learn to let it go. Stop dwelling on the negative. It's a weight. It's like the dog chained to the tree stump in the backyard. And, you know, he can only go so far running around because he's tethered right there. You got to learn to let that stuff go. God is call, calling us to soar in 2023. He's calling your life to be different in 2023. God is calling you to something different. Now, the thing is that that's not something that God does for you. It's something he does with you. <laughs> so, so, so even though God has set the table and even though God has, 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 has called you to, to dinner, you have to come in and eat. You have to do it. See, we, we want God to do everything. And God said, no, I'm not going to do everything. I'm not going to do everything for you. I'm going to do everything with you. So we have to decide that, okay, this is it. This is it. It's time. It's time to move forward. God has given us the means. In Ephesians, God says that, the, the scripture says God has given us every spiritual blessing. And there are a lot of them. Some of us may have used two out of 20. God said, no, I want you to, I want you to use the blessings that I've given you. I want you to, to be that person that I've called you to be. And I'm going to help you be there. But he said that some of those negative things, you just got to let them go because I can't, I can't put anything else. You can only take a handful and hold on to it so much. If I want to give you something else, you got to open your hand. <laughs> Otherwise, I can't get anything else in there. And, and, and some of those negative things, they're like old friends to us. And some of us have built our comfort zone around being negative. You ever know those people you say, how you doing? Oh, man. <laughs> Let me tell you, there's always a problem. Nothing is ever right. You never get, hey, I'm doing great today. We all know people like that. Some of us are those people. <laughs> God said, look, you got to let that stuff go. You got to let it go. You, it's not serving you well. I got some new things for you. He says, see, I'm, 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 I'm doing a new thing. Then he says, look, don't you see it? Don't you see it? And you know why we don't see it sometimes? Because we're so busy looking at the negatives. <laughs> we don't see the new things that God is doing in our life. We don't see them. God said, I, 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 I've got something new for you. I want you to understand. I want you to realize the fact that, that, that there's some place for you to move on to. God says, I want to do some things in your life. I'd blow your mind if you would ever slow yourself down long enough, if you would ever stop long enough just to stop and really spend some time with God. I don't mean those little now I lay me down to sleep prayers. <laughs> I mean stop and spend time with God. We think if we spend five minutes with God, then, then, then we've, we've gone over and above. God said, you're just getting started. Because most of the time during that time, we're talking anyway. <laughs> we're not listening for God. God said, this is a new year. It's 2023. It's new. It's time. <clears throat> you can treat it like the old year if you want to, and then you, it's going to be exactly like the old year. Or you can stretch out on me. You can understand the fact that I want to do some great things through your life. I want to now. And of course, when people hear that, everybody says, yes, amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord. But God says, but I want to do it with you. And we said, oh, God, you're not going to do it for me? No, I want to do it with you. I want to partner with you because my kingdom needs to be built. You ever ask, oh, why, do, why do we come here and sit every Sunday? 
Why do we do this? Do we do, we do it because we're used to doing it? Do we do it because we want to see friends? God says, no, I want you to come here because every time you come here, I have something for you. Something that's going to build you. Something that can make you better. Something that can make you more committed to the cause. But you can be committed to the cause because you surrender to me first. See, commitment has a place. It's just not the main meal. <laughs> Surrendering is the main meal. So in 2023, I, 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 I want you to understand that God has something for you. God says, I'm ready for you. God said, I'm but what I want you to understand is the fact that I brought you through 2022. I brought you through. Yes, it was tough. Yeah, there were bumps in the road. Yeah, there were things that you said, oh my Lord, I don't know how this is going to work out. But you know, we're so used to saying when we have a problem, God, what am I going to do? When God wants us to say, God, what are you going to do? <laughs> What are you going to do about this, Lord? I've committed my life, Lord God. I've surrendered my life, Father God. I'm here. I'm your child. You promised to take care of me. So, God, this is really your problem. <laughs> it's your problem, God. It's happening to me, your child. But, God, this is really your problem. So, so, so what are you going to do about it? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? Sometimes we, 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 we make too many decisions for ourselves, and we make the wrong decision. Anyone here ever make a, a wrong decision? <laughs> ever make a bad decision? And sometimes you know it's bad the minute you do it, and you want to reach out and grab it back. It ain't coming back. <laughs> so God says, so learn to make better decisions up front, and you won't have to cry and weep in the back. And God said, I want to help you to do that. So this is your year. Stop focusing on what other people say. Stop focusing on what, what, what you think other people are talking about. I've seen people walk in and see folks over talking, laughing and joking, and all of a sudden they think they're laughing and joking about me. <laughs> Everything's not about you. God says, God says, I look, I want to lead you and guide you. I want to bring you along. 2023, this can be your year. This could be the year that you write your book about, <laughs> about your life. 2023. Doesn't mean there won't be hardships. Doesn't mean there won't be problems. Why? Because that's called life. What it means is the fact that when those problems and trouble come up, you can through. You can get through. You can make it. Stop getting up. Stop quitting easily. Stop all those. I, 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 I thank God. There are so many times that we make those decisions for ourselves that we think that, that, that we got it under control, that we think that we've rose to a point where, yes, okay, I'm in charge now. You're not in charge. Because I got something for you. So I just want to just wanna say, let, let 2023 be your year. If you say God is your Lord and your Savior, let him saturate your thoughts, your words, and your deeds. If you say he's your God, then let him be your God. Let him lead. If he's not your God, then say he's not your God. <laughs> be bold. Be truthful. Then you stand a chance to survive. If you say you believe God's word is true, act like you believe God's word is true. See, that's how people can tell if you act like it. You can say anything. People look to see what you do. Stand on that word through thick and thin, whether you're on the mountain or the valley, whether you're with other believers or by yourself. In a lot of situations where we're there, we're the only believers in the house. 
Still be that person. If you believe the word of God when it says our battle is not against flesh and blood, then stop cursing out people. Stop attacking people when they do something you don't like. You want to attack somebody? Attack that spirit behind them. Attack what's making them do those things. If you say Bethel AME Church is your church, don't just have a regular seat here that you sit in when you come or a certain group of friends that you interact with when you come. Don't just do that. Roll up your sleeves and get busy working to build God's kingdom. There are many ways to do it. Become an officer. Join the praise and worship team. Join the dance team. Become an altar worker. Teach Sunday school. Attend Bible study. Join a small group. Become a small group leader. Answer the call to ministry that some of you have on your life. Come to church regularly. Call somebody. Ask them how they're doing. Pray for them. Didn't do it in 2022. You can do it in 2023. You can be that person. Let me tell you, there are so many hurting people even sitting in this, in this sanctuary. You don't know the stories, and they don't always share them, but there are people going through that could all use some encouragement. Be that person. It's time to let other stuff go. Let it, let it go. We all have things in our life we can let go. Now, some people will hear this, and they'll agree, but they won't let it go. <laughs> some people will nod. You know, and, but they'll leave here and they'll go and do the same things that they've been doing. Sometimes you watch people come and they come down to the altar and they pray and you talk with them and they come down and they pray and they lay their burdens down all along this altar. And then they stop praying and they get up and they take those burdens and take them back and they walk back to their seat. <laughs> Wasted time. God says, no, no. I want you to learn to lay your burdens down as they used to sing. Glory, glory, hallelujah. When I lay my burdens down, God says, I want you to learn to lay your burdens down. You know, there are things that God has already promised us and blessed us with. And what I really want you to understand is, God says, I want to leave you with the fact if you learn, nothing else sticks. God is the God of the impossible. God can do impossible things. Now, see, we don't think so because we can't do them. <laughs> but, but we don't have to do them. God says, I, 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 I want you to understand that I, I'm the God that can do all those things. I can do the things that are in my word. I can do those things that you're praying about. I can do the, that you cry yourself to sleep about because you can do nothing about. I can do those things. And in my word, if you get in my word and you stay in my word, you'll see that I promise to do some things. But there are some, there, there are some prayers that we lift up that we want to happen that are conditional. God says, look, if you do this, I'll do this. If you praise me, I'll go before you. <laughs> God says, I, 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 I want you to understand. If you surrender your life to me, I'll fight your battles. <laughs> if. I just want to leave you with a couple of things. And doing some, just some reading in preparation for today. I, I, I came across what a, some of the great saints of the word said. And I just want to share a couple of these with you. I want you to think about these. A.W. Toza said, God is looking for those in whom he can do the impossible. What a pity that we plan only the things that we can do by ourselves. George Mueller says, faith does not operate in the realm of the possible. There is no glory for God in the realm which is humanly possible. Faith begins where man's power ends. Amy Carmichael is the missionary to India. She says, when you're facing the impossible, you can count on the God of the impossible. 
Warren Wiersbe said, our faith is not really tested until God asks us to bear what seems unbearable, to do what seems unreasonable, and to expect what seems impossible. D.L. Moody said, if God is your partner, make your plans big because he's the God of the impossible. Think about those things. God wants to do those things through you. Get your mind elevated from, 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 from down low. God says, look, I, you're living in the heavenlies. God said, you're living with Christ Jesus. And where's Christ? He's in the heavenlies. So I want you to begin to think not just the what, about what you can do and what you can deal with down here, but think of the fact that when you pray, you, you, you activate a whole other system. <laughs> you move. When you pray, you don't see something happening, but something starts moving in glory because you prayed. Because you prayed. But you've got to get out of your own way. Sometimes we trip over ourselves. You ever be walking along and all of a sudden trip and you stop and you turn around and there was nothing there? <laughs> you stumble and you just hope too many people didn't see it. <laughs> I leave you with this. You know, when about 15 years ago, I was doing a chapel. It was at the garden. And I was doing a chapel. Things were going great. At players, we do chapel. It's for both players, both, for both teams. And people were coming, and man, the word was flowing, and life was great, and I'm, I got a little bounce in my step. You know, how, you know how we are when we think things are going well. Got a little bounce in our step. And then I went in one day, and all of a sudden, nobody came to chapel. Okay. And then a team came in the next time of people that I knew. I knew everyone. That, they all saw me on the court before the game, and they said, hey, Rev, this and that. Nobody came. Neither the Celtics players nor the visiting team. And this happened like four weeks in a row. And, and, and on the fifth week, I'm sitting, I go and I sit in the chapel room, and of course now I'm discouraged. I'm, oh, Lord, you know, what's going on, you know? And God spoke to me ever so clearly in that empty room. And he said, let me ask you something. He said, if I call you to come here every game and sit in this empty room, and this is where I want you to be, and nobody comes to chapel, can you deal with that? Can you do it? And I thought of it. I felt convicted, and I said, God, if that's what you called me to do, that's what I'm going to do. And I opened up my Bible and said, I'm going to sit here and read Scripture because it was already in the chapel time. As soon as I opened up that Bible, four players walked in. And, I, and, and from there on, things were back to normal. And God taught me a lesson. I said, look, I, I'm the God of the impossible. I can do things you can't do. Forget what they're saying. Forget when people stop speaking to you because you're not doing what they think you should do. Do what I tell you to do, and that's where your blessing is. So I'm going to ask everybody in here to bow your heads. Or bow, bow your head. You don't have heads. Bow your head. Are you where God wants you to be? I, 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 have you left 2022 and 2022? What are you holding on to? Because I guarantee you, all those negative things that you're holding on to, that you won't let go, that you keep close to your heart, even though you may not talk about them, you know, they're, they're all those things, they're going to trip you up in 2023. So God, do what God says. Let it go. Let it go. God said, I, I, I have so much for you in 2023. You don't have room to hold on to all that old stuff. Let it go. Let it go. God said, forget the former thing. Do not dwell on the past. That's a command. That's an imperative. 
See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. You don't have to wait for it. It's springing up right now. Do you not see it? Stop looking just through your physical eyes and look through your spiritual eyes at the blessings God has in store for you. Let this be your year. Whatever ministry that you're in, be there. Do it until God says move on. Whatever relationship that you're in, be there. Work it until God says move on. Because that's God's will for you. The altar is now open. I would encourage you, both here and at home, to go to your altar, to near where you are, to come here. Take those old things and lay them down. And when you get up and walk back to your seat, don't take them with you. Don't take them with you. As the, as the altar workers come, if you want someone to pray with you, they'll pray with you. Altar workers, amen, amen. Yes. yes. Won't you come? and lay your burdens down. Don't be proud. This is your time. This is your time. Yes. Won't you come? You don't know what later on today is going to hold. Get started on building your 2023 you. Yes. Get busy. You know God is tapping at your heart right now. Right now. Yes. Let this year be different. Mm. Let this year be different. Won't you come? Mm. Oh yes. Oh yeah. There's still time. There's still time. You want things, you've been praying for things, and you hope that this is the year they come to fruition. Seal the deal by surrendering to the Lord and kicking all your old baggage to the curb. for joining us for service today but please don't stop here join us every sunday to hear a fresh and powerful word from the lord also subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream and share it with a friend you can also support the ministry by clicking the give now button to help us continue to reach people all around the world for jesus christ thank you again for watching and god bless